We've waited a long time to get here, but today I am very excited to show you the new Edelbrock VRS carburetor. Man, I can't wait. Let's get started. When Edelbrock displayed this carburetor at SEMA 2021, I knew it was going to be a bit of a game changer because there is literally no carburetor on the market for the price that this one is at that has all of these features in it. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to tear this carburetor apart. I'm going to show you every little detail of what makes this carburetor so special. And then, yeah, we'll we'll see what the combination looks like and, and what the possibilities are for this. And really, they're kind of endless because this is a carburetor that's geared a lot towards the street guys and it's very geared towards the race side of things and that's what I'm most excited about but there's a lot of really cool features in both so I want to break this down into three categories we're going to look at the fuel bowls metering blocks and the main body so we're going to break this down into three little sections because there's a lot to cover in each little piece there and yeah it's just there's <laughs> I'm so stoked to have this thing but yeah, we'll, we'll show you how this thing's all put together, and then that way you can kind of make a decision of what you want to do with it. Now, bottom line up front, this is a 650 CFM carburetor, so it's a little smaller than some of the bigger stuff that they're going to have, but this is going to go on the GMC pickup down the road just a little ways because I want to play with it, tune it a little bit, see how it works, and uh, see what we can get out of it. But really, this type of carburetor especially on the race side of things, uh, a good data logger is going to be needed to get the full benefit out of it. So when you start talking about the the air bleeds and the emulsion circuits that are within this carburetor, you've got to have the data to back it up to make the changes that you're going to want to make with it. But we can talk about all that down the road. Eventually, we'll do a really good tuning uh, video. I don't know how much we'll get into the race side of things on that because, like I said, uh, the GMC truck is really just kind of a cruiser, but when we get to the Chevelle, I will put a bigger size of this carburetor on the Chevelle, and there we will definitely be data logging, and uh, we can get a little bit more aggressive into the circuits. So uh, primarily today is just to cover the, the features and benefits of this carburetor and show you all the details, and there is a lot. So it's going to be a longer video, but I guarantee you that you're going to be very impressed with this when you see all the pieces on it. Let's take a look here top down. Now I've lined up the throttle shafts about as close as I can here. And you can tell maybe a little bit that the Edelbrock carburetor is going to be a little bit longer. And that's due to the uh, extra capacity in the float bowls. We'll talk about that in a quick minute. But that'll give you a good representation of what that distance looks like. I know Edelbrock's tested this on quite a few things. Uh, small block Chevy. Uh, Windsor Motor, Pontiacs, um, I think on a big block Chevy, I know on a big block Chevy, um, and I don't think they had any issue with distributor clearance uh, front or rear, depending on where it's mounted, so I think you're going to be, um, with a small cap distributor or a small body distributor, I don't think you're going to have any issue at all, but I wanted you to see what the difference looks like uh, from the top down on those two carburetors. Now, before we get started on the metering blocks, I'm going to post a couple of pictures on the community tab here on the channel because I'd like your opinion and your vote on something, and that is these decals that they're putting on the carburetor. Uh, I've got them on the front side to identify uh, the CFM and, and the uh, uh, part number. I'd like your opinion on that, so please, please go when you're done watching the video, go over to that poll and vote. I'd really like to see several hundred or several thousand votes on that because I want to give that information back to Edelbrock uh, to tell them what everybody thinks about that. Uh, when you peel underneath here, there is actually an Edelbrock logo that is cast underneath there uh, same in the front and so it really knocks the color off of this thing and really you just have the as cast finish and then the black metering blocks and that's it so please go over there and uh, uh, and vote on that uh, that poll will be up uh, well as long as it's there so please go vote it, it, it makes mean all the difference in the world to me if you do that that way like I said provide that uh, feedback to Edelbrock so let's start ripping apart these uh, uh, these metering, or excuse me, these float bowls. Now, Edelbrock has done something fairly unique here with these float bowls, and that's 
one of the reasons why I wanted to break it down and make its own category of its own. So let me get these screws out really quick here and then uh, I'll show it to you. Now there's a lot going on here so I'm going to try to cover it as quick as possible. Float bowls from the front and rear, they both have these nice little drain plugs, that's a nice little bonus. The needle and seat assembly is standard, uh, those are pretty easy to come by. Uh, the floats are kind of cool, um, they're both notched um, front and rear for the jet extensions on the rear of the carburetor, so they're not uh, front back specific, that's kind of standard. Um, one interesting thing here is they've notched the corners of the floats. Now, what makes that so special? In a situation on a race carburetor, especially if you're road racing or autocrossing, and you get into those situations where you are turning hard and the carburetor's at an angle, what sometimes happens is the float, if it's cornered off like a, like a factory one or a standard one where they have the corners, sometimes that corner will dip into the fuel and keep it from adding fuel into the system. So they've went ahead and notched those to allow more fuel flow into the bowls in those hard cornering situations. Nice little update or a little upgrade, I like that. And again, that's the same on the front and rear. Uh, that's a factory standard one, like I said, that uh, doesn't have that. And this is a front bowl off of a, uh, a Holley carburetor, an 800, and they're not notched. So just something to be aware of. Now, standard 30cc pumps on the 650. I don't know if the larger carburetors are going to have a 50cc pump at all, but Edelbrock tells me that those kits are available if you want to upgrade that. Um, nice, big, large sight glasses on both sides of the carburetor. Uh, that's kind of cool, so it's not left-right specific. Same with the inlets. You can swap them side to side, so if you want to go uh, passenger side to driver side, you can do that. Not that big of a deal. Uh, fuel pressure on this carburetor. Let's talk about that right now. Um, 5 to 7 PSI, I believe, is going to be the range for that, but that's going to take a little bit of time to kind of just kind of tune it and see, but I do believe 7 is going to be on the high end of it, and you know, we'll see how the tuning goes. On the inside, there are some very, very trick things going on here. So you can see here uh, within the bowl, there are these baffles that are in there. That is to control. We talked about that autocross situation where it's left, right, and you're cruising, uh, making hard turns. That's to keep the fuel from uh, getting out of the bottom side of the bowl where the jets are at. Uh, so I certainly like that addition. It's a nice little upgrade. Here's one that uh, is very, very interesting as well, too. So needle and seed is here. They have this anti-slosh mustache that they call it. So when the fuel comes in, uh, it directs down into it. It doesn't slosh, and it also helps the fuel within the, uh, the bowl from sloshing around. Kind of a trick little deal here. I uh, wasn't really expecting that with that with this carburetor, but I kind of like the thought going into it. A lot of little details like you're, you're going to see like this over and over in this carburetor that they just thought about. They threw every feature that they could into this carburetor. So now last thing is Edelbrock claims that these are a larger capacity float bowl. And it looks like it is just the depth of it here. But let's go ahead and measure that. I'm going to take a holly bowl and I'm going to take one of the Edelbrock ones. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug up the holes here. And then we're going to fill these with fluid and see if we can get uh, a measurement on both the Edelbrock and the holly to see how much more fuel this one holds. So let me take a quick break. I'll set that up and then we'll uh, pour some fluid in it and see how much it is. All right, I'm gonna try to make this as least messy as possible. Uh, I've got the uh, the plugs uh, uh, plugged up or the holes plugged up, and what I'm doing is gonna take the mineral spirits, pour it in here, and then I'm going to dump it out into that bowl. Uh, I will clean that glass back out, and then we will measure how many milliliters this thing holds. Give us a rough idea anyway. We'll do it on the holly and on the Edelbrock bowl. So let's see if I can do this without uh, creating too much of a mess. There we go. And I'm going to fill it all the way up to the top. I'm not... Uh... Alright, quick to get out of here. I could be the most scientific, but it's going to give us a really, really... One of my... One of my 
plugs is leaking, but that's okay. That little tiny bit's not going to make that big of a deal. So let's get that cleaned up and then we'll put it in there and we'll show you how many milliliters the Adelbrock Brock Bull holds. Okay, we got it transferred back over into our measuring cup and I'm going to call it 175 milliliters. I think that's close enough. It's just a touch below that line, but I think it's close enough given uh, the little tiny bit that was leaking out of there. We're going to roughly call it that. So uh, that's the Edelbrock 175 milliliters. Now let's take a look at the Holly. I'm, not, I'm going to save you the aggravation of watching me stumble around with it. We'll get it poured in there and then we'll get the Holly result. I'll show that to you right now. Okay, so you can see that the Holly Bowl holds around 150 milliliters. That's pretty dialed in on the line. I got the, the plug straightened out, so I, I think that's fairly accurate for what we're doing here. Uh, it's fine. So the Edelbrock carburetor holds about 25 millimeters more of fuel. Uh, good information to know. So yes, the Edelbrock float bowl is just a little bit bigger. Now it doesn't take into consideration the metering block or anything else. And that is the full capacity of the bowl. That is not the capacity of the bowl at different float levels. I get all that. I just want to know total volume of the bowl how much we fuel or in this case mineral spirits we could hold in there and that's what this is for so we know that it's just a little bit larger what that equates to at your fuel setting or the, your float level that's to be determined but just as an indication with the floats in there that come in the holly carburetor bowl and the edelbrock bowl that gets us close enough so proves the point about 25 milliliters more on the edelbrock one thing that's been asked on these this carburetor is uh, Edelbrock says that it's a half inch taller than the standard carburetor. So I'm going to show you what that difference looks like. And I'm just going to use this a very simple tape measure. Um, standard 2x4 uh, on there. So don't pay too much attention, I don't think, to the air horn, uh, top of the air horn assembly where the choke goes. Uh, or this top part here because they look fairly close. What we need to concentrate on is where the uh, air cleaner mounts and that's the two dimensions we're going to look at here so you can tell that the hopefully that image is good enough that you can tell the Edelbrock carburetor is a little bit bigger and we're going to measure both sides real quickly so we can see if we can figure out if it's actually half inch so we're looking at around four and three quarter off the bench to the very edge here. Let's see on the Edelbrock. We can get a ballpark here. And get on the other side, see if we can get a better measurement. Yeah. So it's about five and a quarter. So it is, it's about half inch taller, and that's the that's the key point is where the air cleaner mounts because the air cleaner is gonna you know be closer to the hood or under the car, whatever it is you're working on. So that's the difference. That's how that looks, uh, where that half inch difference is. Let's talk about the main body now. We talked about being about a half inch taller um, on the bottom side here because this is a one piece main body and throttle plate assembly. There are no screws on the bottom side. I do like that. Uh, I know that's always been something that everybody's been concerned about through the past, uh, but having a one-piece body and throttle shaft assembly, um, you'll get some varying opinions on that, I think, but uh, I don't have any issue with it. Um, you know, the Edelbrock carburetor, uh, the Performer Series, and the AVS is a one-piece uh, throttle and, and uh, main body, so eh, six one, half a dozen the other, and it's not like you're buying throttle plates uh very inexpensive on the other brand anyway if you break an ear off so i don't think it's going to be that big of an issue um other thing here there's no choke on this carburetor obviously uh it's primarily a race carburetor and that's the way you have to kind of view this thing i think first and foremost is it's a race piece so no choke on the top side here's something that i thought that was really cool that edelbrock did um the throttle shafts are half inch in diameter massive massive throttle shafts they're uh, brass bushed so uh, they should have a really good long uh, life to them but what i really like about that it gives a really nice uh, or i guess those are bronze bushings uh, it gives a really nice feel to it there's no 
binding or cocking of the, the throttle uh, when you open it up. So the action on this thing is just so beautiful and sweet. Uh, and I'm assuming it's because those half inch throttle shafts are a little more stable. So that thing's kind of cool. One thing on the uh, <laughs> that I really like about this is Edelbrock gives you the standard uh, pin or uh, cam link to go from uh, the main to the secondary and it will open slightly on the front and then it will start to open up the secondary. Edelbrock's going to give you a couple of different links. So there is another link that is a different opening rate on the secondaries and they will give you a link that will let you open them one to one. So they both open at the exact same time. Absolutely love that. Again, another little tuning piece to this thing that's just <laughs> really wicked uh, cool. Um, so many different little options here in this carburetor. That's just another one. So that's a nice thing about it. Um, one thing here to, to be aware of is uh, the stud for the air cleaner is bigger. Now this is a 5 16th bolt. That's a quarter by 20 that's in a standard carburetor. So you can kind of get the difference in it. So you need to be prepared for that. If you've got an air cleaner uh, that's got a quarter inch hole, you're going to need to open that up uh, if you're going to use this on a street car. So something to be aware of there. Um, the boosters. Now Edelbrock originally uh, had made mention that the boosters were going to be able to come out of there and you'll be able to change them. But I've noticed on this carburetor, uh, unless there's something I'm missing, that the boosters are permanently pinned in there. Uh, Edelbrock had made mention of changing booster sizes in the carburetors. I don't know if that's going to be an option going forward. Something I guess we'll wait to hear from them. Um, this one has the uh, down leg style uh, booster. It's the 650. The 750 850 and 950 will all have a, a annular booster in it. So nice little upgrade in that. Um, back to the throttle shafts again really quick here. Because those are half inch uh, diameter, the cam for the opening of the accelerator pump is going to be different. So that won't swap over from the standard carburetor. Edelbrock will have the different cam sets so you can dial in uh, when that pump shot hits, how quickly or how slowly. So one thing to be keep in mind there. Um, now let's get into some, I guess, a little bit more uh, technical side of this. But wait, I guess before we do that, let's talk about the throttle position sensor. Absolutely love this. This is one of the coolest things about this carburetor uh, is having a provision for a TPS. So this is what it looks like without the TPS. And that's what it looks like with the TPS mounted. So really love this so many very cool things about that with data logging possibilities with obviously using a modern transmission where you need a tps signal to go back to the transmission awesome awesome piece to this just love the way that uh, is included in here and, and what a clean looking setup uh, other than the ones that kind of bolt onto the side of the carburetor so uh, very very beautiful love how that thing looks and uh, <laughs> it's just a a piece to it, a function that I absolutely love. Uh, cover just comes off. Hang on to that because you may need it in case you don't use that. But what a cool deal. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on the top side because this is one of the cooler things about this carburetor is having access to all these air bleeds. So we're going to cover this very, very in depth on a later video. Right now, I just want to show you what's available here. So these outside ones on the four corner are the idle circuit air bleeds you've got the one that's right next to it which is the intermediate bleed it's the same on all four corners here so as you move in these are your two bleeds for your high speed operation and again this is where the racing side comes in and if you're data logging and can look at AFR ratings and see where you're at with it you can adjust these bleeds uh, to give you some more fuel um, into the system. Really, really cool. Or take fuel out. You can always go to a smaller bleed. So you've got two different ones. You've got a uh, two different high-speed uh, bleeds. You've got the outer bleed uh, and then the inner bleed. So, uh, again, very, very cool little setup. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get down the road on the tuning side. Uh, the squirters, the nozzles are the same standard size, so if you've got uh, nozzles in your um, 
you know, in your possession, they will work in it. Uh, in the 650, these come with 31s. I'm sure that's going to change depending on uh, the size. But uh, air bleeds is what I wanted to show you the, the most here. And <laughs> what a really, really trick setup that is. Now, why did Edelbrock make this carburetor taller? And that's what we want to talk about next is the location of the booster. And what they had plenty of time to do was to see where the carburetor made its most power, um, drivability, throttle response. So by changing the height of the overall carburetor, you could lengthen the, the Venturi and start to move the booster up and down to see where it made the most power. And again, such a really cool little concept here uh, that that extra half inch gives you. So uh, the boosters are down a little bit further in the Venturi. So what that does, is it gives a little bit more ability for airspeed to build up uh, before it hits the uh, the booster and start to meter fuel out of the main metering circuit. So what a really cool deal. Um, the boosters themselves are also a little taller, so they've got more what uh, mixing length is what they said. Um, so it just gives a little bit more time for that fuel and air to mix uh, going in there. But what a lot of really trick stuff going on here in the top of this carburetor. And really the boosters are the thing that kind of excites me uh, the most about this top side. Yeah, the the uh, air bleeds and all that stuff are very, very cool on the race side. But that's something that the street guys will see as well too. Throttle response is everything and having a quick, snappy, uh, easy way to transition from idle to to uh, you know, moving down the road or 30, 20, 30 miles per hour to get on the highway and you need that extra throttle response or passing, whatever it is. What a really cool function here and just got to love that part about it. So that's the uh, the other cool side about it, I guess. Um, these vent tubes are, are much taller than a standard vent tube. So um, I'm sure there's a reason behind that. I don't have an answer for that. Didn't really look at it, but... Uh, just something to be aware of, but uh, that's the top side. So we're going to take one more look at the bottom side of this carburetor. So another really kind of neat little feature here is this will bolt to a 4150 or a 4500 series intake manifold. So if you just happen to have a bigger intake manifold, this will bolt down to it. I uh, thought that was very cool. Check valves for the power valves. There's power valves on both uh, metering blocks. Uh, these have the little check ball. So if you get a backfire, it will not blow out the power valve. Again, another nice little deal, little function here. Here's another ridiculously trick feature about this carburetor. These are auxiliary air bleeds. So if you've got a big, heavy, lumpy camshaft and you need more airflow into the engine, the old school way of doing it was either drilling the throttle plates or you know, cranking the throttle open way too much so you're in the transfer slot so you can get enough air and then you're fighting too much fuel and just ridiculous. But if you've got a great big camshaft, you can add more air to the system by using one of these on either side of the carburetor. And what that does is introduces air into the system underneath the throttle plates so you can leave them closed, uh, not get into the transfer slots and use them for what they were intended for. So it's kind of a really cool deal to have that bypass to dump more air into the engine on those big heavy street cams. So another thing that makes this really, really cool for a street carburetor, like I said, there's one of these on both sides. So absolutely love this little feature. I can't wait to see this again on the GMC truck. I'm not going to use that option, but when we get over to the Chevelle, it's got a little bit more aggressive cam and uh, eager to see how that works, but very, very cool feature. Okay, so that covers everything on the main body. Now let's take a look at our last section here, and that is the metering blocks. Again, because you've got all the uh, air bleeds and the adjustment in the main body, you're going to have those on the metering blocks as well. So let's take a look at the primary one real quick here. Lots of different circuits in here. Uh, all the emulsion jets can be changed. The idle circuit jets are up here uh, underneath the power valve. I already loosened this up so I could get this out of here really quickly. Uh, you can change the fueling on the power valve side as well. So very, very trick. Um, full billet metering block here. Um, again, the adjustability on this thing is just insane. Um, I don't even know how to 
I don't even know how to uh, address this thing. I mean, it's literally a high-end race carburetor with all of the tunability and adjustability in the thing. But at the price, um, I, it's just I don't understand how Edelbrock was able to do this, add in all these cool features and not have this thing cost, you know, $1,400, $1,500. Uh, one other thing here, too. Um, if you look, these are the idle mixture screws on the primary. You've got them on the secondary side as well. So you have the four corner idle. Uh, very, very, very trick. Uh, a little addition to that as well, too. On the secondary block, uh, very cool to see the uh, jet extensions on there as well. Uh, that's a nice little feature. Uh, idle um, circuit uh, fueling and uh, intermediate circuit fueling so again just the level of adjustability here is just over the top and it, you know combined with the the features in the main body there um, you're literally very going to be very hard pressed to find a carburetor that's got more adjustability than this one for metal brock so again it's those the combination of the the main body and, and the metering blocks i'm just absolutely stoked for the race guys to be able to have that level at a really super affordable price uh, a couple other things here uh timed and manifold vacuum for the street guys for the vacuum advance or line back to the transmission uh pcv uh, and uh, uh power brake uh, ports uh, on there as well um, gaskets uh, the non-stick type I think these are a specialty cut uh, in these I don't think they're the same I'm gonna have to take a look at and compare it to uh, other gaskets but I believe these are going to be fairly unique to this carburetor simply because you've got all of the uh, emulsions on there and uh, I am going to assume that they are they will need to be a little bit different as far as uh, how the metering block feeds it so anyway um, I'm going to put this thing all back together and then uh, we'll wrap it up I'll give you my final thoughts okay we're all back together I'll give you some final thoughts on this thing Every time I put my hands on it or, or take it apart or put it back together, it just seems like I find something else, something more to look at and, and think about and talk about. And it's just, it blows me away that this level of, of adjustability is out there for a street carburetor. Now, at the time of this video, this 650 is going to retail for under $800. Think about that for a moment. Under $800 for a four-circuit idle, a carburetor with a TPS unit in, <laughs> air bleeds, emulsion jets, the adjustability of it all. I'm just, again, it's staggering that they could put all of those pieces into the puzzle. Now, as of right now, uh, this carburetor is made in Sanford, uh, North Carolina with the other carburetor uh, facility there and I think there's probably some pieces that are sourced from different parts of the country the jets I'm sure probably are coming from offshore but all, they all do so it's not that big of a deal really as far as I'm concerned but it's just absolutely remarkable to me that for that kind of money you can get that level of adjustment out of a carburetor the uh, the annular or auxiliary air bleeds there to you know, calm down a, a rowdy cam. I'm just, it, it's shocking to me really. And I'm, I'm so thankful that a company is willing to continue to invest in working on carburetors. I mean, they're not, think about it. I mean, with the electric age coming on and everything really have gone to fuel injection in the last 25 years and, and really aggressive on the aftermarket side, carburetors shouldn't be getting this amount of attention. And yet here we are in 2022 with the baddest carburetor that I have ever put my hands on. That's an off the shelf piece for that kind of money. Hands down, one of the most exciting things I've seen in, well, since the AVS2 came out. So I'll leave some links down in the description. Right now, this carburetor is not available. Uh, from what I understand, we're looking at about 45 to 60 days, potentially less than that. Uh, 650 and 750 will be first. Um, I had my choice between a 650 or 750, but I chose a 650 because it'll work on the truck. Uh, when we do the Chevelle, I'll either go 850, 950 on that. More than likely, it'll probably be 850, but I'm really eager to see how that taller carburetor and the boosters located a little bit further down in the Venturi 
uh, it really it changes the tunability for this. And maybe you don't need that big of a carburetor for an engine anymore. Maybe we're going to have to rethink that math going forward. It's hard to say, but the prospects here are very exciting, that's for sure. So again, if you've got any questions on this carburetor, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Please go to the community tab and vote on that poll that I put up. I really, really want to hear your feedback. I think Edelbrock wants to hear it as well, too. So leave as many comments as you want. Please, if you watch this video, I really, really would encourage you to go make your voice heard. Um, I think Edelbrock's looking for a little bit of, uh, you know, see what the public thinks on it. And here's your opportunity to make your voice heard. So anyway, again, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I just, I'm so geeked on this thing. I've been waiting for it for so long that I'm just so very excited to have my hands on it. And I can't wait for y'all to get your hands on yours too. So anyway, we will catch you guys on the next one. Man, this has got me happy. I can't believe it. Thanks guys. We'll see you.